Well, it's the eve of Christmas Eve, and I thought, hey, how about we learn some stuff before the holidays truly come? Wouldn't that just be exciting? Probably not, but who cares? It's Fun Facts with Discord! Here we go! The reason banana candy doesn't taste like bananas is because it resembles a banana that went extinct many, many years ago. But that is just to be a myth. The real reason is because they know how to make artificial flavors and put it in banana-flavored candy. That means somebody had to have tasted this ancient banana if they wanted that one to work. I don't even know how you figure that one out. But more importantly, why not just make it regular banana-flavored? I think the bananas we have today are pretty dang delicious. Just make that flavor! Contrary to popular belief, chameleons don't change color for camouflaging themselves. It's usually to indicate emotion or temperature. And a chameleon's eyes only have one lid that wraps all the way around. That's creepy, but cute, because chameleons are adorable. In the Great Depression, hobos used signs written on walls or sidewalk to communicate with other hobos about good places to sleep, people who live in certain houses, etc. And hey, here's a diagram of all of them. I think I've actually seen some of these before. I still think they use it, or at least when I was in New York City, I think they still use it. Blazing Saddles was an influential comedy that had a lot of consequences in modern-day filmmaking. But funnily enough, or rather not so funnily enough, the major use of the derogatory term in the film was not what made people angry. It was rather a famous scene in the film. This scene in particular. And if you don't want to punch in the GIF code, it is the scene where Mongol punched the horse to the ground. The horse was trained to fall on cue, act her, among other things. But the statement, no animals were harmed in the making of this film, had yet to be coined. So many, many people wrote in asking if the horse is okay. It is a very well-trained horse. It knows how to fall when being punched. Maybe it's Bojack's ancestor, I don't know. Sometime after The Phantom of the Opera was released in 2004, a whole new original song composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber would begin to circulate on the internet, which has given new appreciation to the movie. Sadly, it was cut before the final release. However, the deleted scene can be viewed on YouTube right here. Look at that, Z going music. Advertising other videos within my videos, aren't you just a clever little man right there? The first recorded autonomous sensory meridian response ASMR. was a forum post on SteadyHealth.com back in 2007 called Weird Sensation Feels Good. Soon afterwards, Jennifer Allen founded the Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response Group on Facebook, and people began making ASMR content in an attempt to trigger the stimuli, and the rest is history. Look as he go and go, he's got all these facts, they're just good, okay. Making the animated special for How the Grinch Stole Christmas wasn't Seuss's idea at all. It was the idea of Looney Tunes director Chuck Jones. The only reason Seuss was so hesitant on making it, it was because of his less-than-stellar filmmaking experience with his movie called The Five Thousand Fingers of Dr. T. That sounds scandalous. About five years ago, IBM made a short animation called A Boy in His Atom. The entire thing was made by moving atoms frame by frame, and it was described as the smallest movie ever made. Pun fully intended. The YouTube, ugh, the YouTube Rewind 2018 is one, if not the most disliked video on YouTube. Currently, it has 13 million dislikes. The more insane part of this is, is that the video itself has only been up for two weeks. And it beat up Justin Bieber's baby, which has been on YouTube for years. The reason why our body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius for you people who aren't American, is because it's warm enough to prevent fungal infection and cold enough that we eat nonstop to maintain our metabolism. Oh, so that's why we eat nonstop? Oh, well, okay then, I'll take it. Good excuse. And finally, Punch-Out's creative team was also the same team that worked on the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, and the Wii. The last game the team made for Nintendo was Pilot Wing 64. When a new team wanted to make Punch-Out for the Wii, they had to ask permission for the character's uses. Little Mac's size in the original Punch-Out wasn't because of storyline, but due to hardware restraints. The Nintendo Entertainment System is not as strong as an arcade cabinet, meaning they couldn't do the wire model that was the same size of the fighters, as it would have stressed and crashed the system. And little did you know, because of that restraint, we now have this iconic small little boxer from New York, who, for some reason, everybody ships with Samus and Smash.
Okay. Well, Merry Christmas Eve. Eve. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Well, I hope you had a merry, 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 merry Christmas, if you celebrate. But it's time to learn things again. It's Fun Facts with Discord. Number nine? Number nine, yeah. Before it was used for comedy, the banana skin was considered a public hazard. The slip on a banana peel gag has been a staple of stage and screen humor since at least the early 1900s. Can you imagine if we never used it for comedy, though? It just stayed a public hazard. It's like, hey, dude, if you're coming up for lunch, you want to take 32nd Street. 33rd Street's got banana peels all over it, and it's just, it's a bad time, man. Randy broke both of his legs going up that way. Spice isn't a taste. It's an acid that's confusing your brain, thinking it's pain. This is also why if you rub chili on your skin, it burns. Yes, it is called capsaicin, and it is a weird little chemical that makes your nerves in your brain think that you are experiencing pain, like being on fire. So it's going to do everything it can to get it out. When Dr. Seuss was first taking art classes, he would look at what he was working on in all different directions, especially upside down. He only took the class a few times before the teacher told him, That's not how you look at art. And he never went back again. At the founding of the first McDonald's, Ray Kroc and Coca-Cola executive named Waddy Pratt. Waddy Pratt. Waddy Pratt? Waddy Pratt? That guy entered into a gentleman's handshake agreement that all McDonald's would offer Coca-Cola exclusively. Both companies continue to honor this agreement. As a former business law student, I can tell you one thing. Handshake agreements are still within legal bounds, so of course they would commit to it. Back in 1659, the Puritans in Boston banned the observation of Christmas due to its satanic practices that Puritans saw as unruly and disgusting malformations of how Christ would be celebrated. The ban was later reappealed in 1681, but celebrating Christmas wasn't fashionable since the mid-19th century, in which corporations and the media gave Christmas the image of a time of feasts and gift-giving to help boost sales at that time of the year. And it worked. If voice actors want to moonlight for other roles they have been called for, they simply credit themselves under fake names in those side jobs rather than their real names. Moonlight. Yes, that's a fancy way of saying they gonna do hentai or other fan service anime. And yes, it's absolutely true. Ancient Greece was pretty gay. No, seriously, Heracles had several male lovers on top of four wives. In fact, several heroes and heroines had same-sex partners as well as hetero partners. In fact, they even had a god and a temple dedicated to male lovers. The goddess Aphrodite, indeed, had several gods just dedicated to LGBT love, such as the Erotes, Eros Himeros, and Pothos. Hermes was said to bestow qualities of beauty, loyalty, strength, and eloquence on male lovers, while Aphrodite was the patron of lesbians. There was even an androgynous version of her in Cyprus named Aphroditus, who would then become Hermaphroditus. Please, please tell me I got those names right. I do not want another Persephone situation. I did not sleep for three days after that. Carrots are actually harmful to rabbits. According to RSPCA, 11% of all pet rabbits have tooth decay as a result of hitting the orange stuff too hard. Plus, with a high amount of sugar, they could cause obesity. So please treat carrots for rabbits like treating us with desserts. Make it a mega mega man! 2 had the first ending cinematic. It starts right after the defeat of Dr. Wily. Dr. Wily falls to the floor, begging for forgiveness. He's taken into custody, and that's it. Right? Wrong! The next scene starts with Mega Man walking as a spotlight shows over him and a village is behind him. The seasons change from cherry blossom, spring, summer, winter, and monsoon. It's in Japan. The final shot is of his helmet on the ground, alone on a hill above a large village. This is a stark contrast to when the games begin. Him standing alone on top of a large skyscraper as his helmet slowly warped in on top of his head. This is also a stark contrast compared to other games of the time. Most games just had scenes from the game as credits roll, followed by a thanks for playing, I guess. There isn't a thanks for playing in this game. Instead, it's just a melancholy walk to an unknown destination. No messages whatsoever to the player, leaving Mega Man's fate as ambiguous. And then they made like, four more games, and then, like, the X-Series, and then they brought it back, so... Yeah. 
the Jurassic Park dinosaurs we all know and love today, albeit incredibly inaccurate now, were actually made to be as accurate to what the vision of dinosaurs at the time was. Granted, you still had six-foot velociraptors and frilled dilophosauruses, but looking past the details made for entertainment purposes. The dinosaurs were meant to be as accurate to dinosaur knowledge at the time. And then Jurassic World was like, nah, man, these are just way too cool, so we're just gonna keep making them that way, and they actually acknowledge it in the film, and the scientist says, yeah, we we have the information, but these are just cooler. He said it exactly like that. Go go look it up. I quote for you right here. Yeah, we just put them in because it just looks cooler. Your muscles are actually strong enough to rip themselves off your bones if your body lets you. Your body naturally limits how much force you can use at any one time to prevent this. But in extreme situations, people have tapped into this raw power to gain what's known as hysterical strength, letting them do things like lift burning helicopters off of people. And in case you didn't know, that's what inspired All Might's quirk, okay? Jumping the shark, according to our good old friend Wikipedia, is most commonly used in reference to unsuccessful gimmicks for promoting something. It is similar to past its peak, but more specifically suggests an unwillingness to acknowledge the failing. Basically, it is when a show decides to go completely off track from the original storyline of the show, and it begins declining in quality and likability. The turn comes from fifth season episode from the 1990s, wait, 1990s? Sitcom Happy Days when the storyline completely straight off course just to show off the water skiing skills of Henry Winkler, the actor for Fonzie. Fonzie, while visiting Los Angeles, is challenged for his bravery by water skiing and jumping over a confined shark. It is said that the overall story of the show was downhill from there. I mean, yes, but did Happy Days really have a story worth following? I don't know. And... Finally, in the movie Elf, the Jack in the Box testing scene had to be a bit more elaborate to be believable. Will Ferrell was situated on the set with Jack in the Boxes, while one of them was remote controlled and the director was off camera with the remote. The reactions of Will Ferrell was genuine because the director waited for just the right moment to set it off. Seeing how mad Buddy was at that Jack in the Box makes it that much funnier. See, I had a feeling, because it's just one of those, I like, because Jack in the Boxes are so random, how do you get that to actually work? And now, now I know. And now you all know. And I have no funny way of signing this off, so... Bye! Yeah, bye. Well, it's now 2019, the world's not on fire yet, so we might as well celebrate with some fun facts with Discord, what do you say? Okay, here we go. Coca-Cola used a special term to keep track of the sales, the percentage of all of humanity's hydration they provide. Imagine being that cocky with your drink. The little jerking movement that your eyes do sometimes is called nystigmus. It is known as the dancing eyes due to the jerky, at times erratic movements. It is much more pronounced under certain conditions, such as alcohol intoxication, head trauma, albinism, and more. Because the horizontal gaze nystigmus is pronounced under alcohol intoxication, it is used as a field sobriety test. Oh, that makes sense. Red velvet cake is actually just chocolate flavor, but it's dyed red to trick you into thinking that it's a different flavor. And that's why I have trust issues. The first ever McDonald's mascot was Speedy, a chef with a hamburger or cheeseburger shaped head until he was replaced by Ronald McDonald in 1967. Ronald was a hit for the company, although his appearance was changed a little. He sparked commercials, ads, and was even in a few parades. Speedy is still on a few older McDonald's signs, and even ones that were updated, but nobody bothered to change the sign. I much prefer the idea of a chef with a hamburger head over Ronald McDonald, because he gives me nightmares. So can we go back to him, please? There is an award called the Darwin Award, and it is given to people who significantly improve the gene pool by eliminating themselves from the human race in an obviously stupid way. Winners have to follow the following criteria. Out of the gene pool, dead or sterile. Excellence, astounding misapplication of judgment. Self-selection, cause one's own demise. Maturity, capable of sound judgment, and veracity. The event must be true. Is that actually an award? I know a lot of people joke around with that, but is that actually an award we give out? There was a technique in old cartoons called Mickey Mousing, where the music would be written first, and the animation would be synchronized to the music. It's referred to as Mickey Mousing because Mickey Mouse cartoons did it all the time. Yes, because Mickey, old Mickey Mouse cartoons didn't have voices in it, so it was easier to just make the music first.
Yeah. During the popular music video for My Chemical Romance's song Na 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 from the album Danger Days, there is a scene in which an outfit used by the band during another album entitled The Black Parade, oh no, can be found worn out and buried in the sand. Allegedly, this is to show the departure of the band's drummer, Bob Breyer, who was kicked out after the Black Parade was released due to some controversy involving him and several others in and outside of the band. The sad. The keyboard layout has been changed from A, B, C, D, E, F to Q, W, E, R, T, Y. Because when people were typing in the A, B, C, D, E, F layout, people were typing so fast that the mechanical arms underneath the keys clashed and stuck together. So they randomized the keys to what would be the Q, W, E, R, T, Y layout to fix the problem. That makes so much sense. Blockbuster and Nintendo hated each other. Nintendo saw the rental industry as copyright infringement, and indeed in Japan, there are many laws against rentals thanks to them. This was due to many Japanese rental places renting out cracked copies of software at the time the laws were written. However, here in the United States, we already had rental protections in place. As well as that nifty copyright law that prevented stores from making cracked copies. However, that didn't stop Blockbuster and various other rental stores from writing their own instructions for the game, which in turn was an infringement on the artist who made the original instruction manual. Eventually, both reached a compromise once Sega stepped in and okayed rentals on their end, but both still quite hated each other. That's kind of sad to think about. I, I do not remember ever getting a manual with the Blockbuster rentals, but that's heartbreaking to know that they kind of made their own. It's weird. Four episodes of The Twilight Zone were ever pulled from syndication or prevented from entering syndication due to lawsuits of one form or another. They were Miniature, A Short Drink from a Certain Fountain, Sounds and Silence, and most infamously, The Encounter. Due to the latter's poor reception and treatment from and of the Japanese American community. Good. And uh, finally... The long, beautiful dips along the center of western sword blades, even many modern knives, are fullers. On top of these being beautiful, they actually serve to lighten the blade as a lot of material went into forging the blade, making it very heavy to handle. The fullers lighten the blade a good 25-30% to 30 without any sacrifice to structural integrity. Though, strangely, antiquarians called them blood grooves, despite the fact that these never served any purpose involving blood. I have no idea why they would call that. It's kind of gorish. A lot of swords like this were made for self-defense, not really death death. I mean, so, some of them were. We're not going to get into that. I'm over-embellishing. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Guess what day it is. It's Fun Facts with Discord Day. Are you ready? Me too. Let's do it. In 2008, a Brazilian Catholic priest died after disappearing during a flight in a special chair with 1,000 balloons tied to it. He was very famous in his city for doing similar flights, but this time, he pretended to beat the most during flight of this kind record. After all these happened, he became known in Brazil as Padre do Belo, in English, the Balloon Priest. He was a winner of the Darwin Award, and just in case you were wondering, this is really a fact. You can look it up in the internet. In the internet, not on the internet. In the internet, go deep. The camera function in Smash Brothers Ultimate allows for you to see the more details in certain stages than you could in previous entries. An example of that is in the Nintendog stage. There is a lit fireplace on the wall to the right, but it's not fully animated. Another detail can be seen in the Foresight stage where you can actually move the camera inside the buildings and see that almost every one of them has an actual interior. It kind of makes you wonder if they had an idea to actually incorporate the interiors in Foresight. Well, why do I know I'm not a Smash guy? I just do the funny voices. Only 5% of the world's population are native English speakers. However, if you include everyone who picked up English as a second language, then more than a third of the world's population speaks English, making English the dominant lingua franca. So the next time somebody tells you to start speaking English, you just go to them and say, Bobby Basic, you listen right here. Only 5% of you speak English, so shut the French toast up. You could choose to swear if you want to. I mean, I just, yeah. 
yeah. The Pokemon Lucario can be defined as a glass cannon in both the Pokemon games and the Super Smash Brothers games purely because of the fact that its Pokedex entry states that the more damage it takes, the stronger its aura gets. And that's fun to think about because that's kind of like Saiyan logic. And also Lucario was voiced by Sean Samel, who voices Goku, who is also Saiyan in Oh My God film theory. No one tell Matt Pat. World of Warcraft has its own Make-A-Wish story. There's an NPC with an odd voice in Mulgore. He has a beginner's quest of asking you to find his pet dog. He is the only NPC with that voice in the game. Why? The creator of the character was a Make-A-Wish kid who got the to tour Blizzard Studio as his wish. Since World of Warcraft was his escape from the hospital. While there, he designed the quest, the character, voiced it, and on top of all that, got to design and name the PvP rewards for Season 2 of Arenas, as well as design one of the awards. The NPC is friendly to both sides of the game. And while it won't offer the quest, he won't call the guards if you drop by to visit as an alliance. The dog running around the camp he is in is named after his real-life pet. That's actually the most touching thing I've heard all day. And finally, on April Fool's Day, 1976, BBC announced that Pluto would soon pass behind Jupiter and reduce Earth's gravity, which would cause listeners to feel like they were floating if they jumped into the air at exactly 9.47 a.m. It was meant as a joke, but hundreds of people called in claiming they felt the Jovian Plutonian gravitational effect. It's stuff like that that makes me realize that's why Monty Python makes fun of BBC so much. Well, I hope you all have a fantastic Monday and that it's worry free, but then again, it's Monday and things always happen because life's fun like that. Okay, bye.